Hey guys, um, today what I'm going to talk about is how to use fiber mesh to generate essentially polygon planes that we could then essentially attach some sort of a transparency map or you know some sort of a texture that essentially represents the beard or you know hair cap or whatever we want like brows and so on so what I'm gonna do is uh, I've got my little character here in front of us and what I'm gonna do is gonna choose a subdivision level that is going to be just enough for me to essentially create some sort of a cap or a, a patch to where the beard or the hair will grow from and this is quite easily done just by you know choosing your mesh and then uh, we could we could either delete everything else except for the parts that we essentially want to keep but what I'm going to do is just for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to keep it simple and just mask out the areas that I essentially want to generate the hairs from so going from here I'm just choosing my control masking tool and I'm masking out a patch where I essentially want to grow the hairs from and I like to go a little bit further than you know, just the general area of where the beard will grow uh, just because I feel like uh, we might want to trim down a little bit back using a softer version of the mask. So essentially what I'm doing is masking out the full you know, section. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's mask out the top lip as well. Oops, wrong button there. i mask this out, something like that. There we go, that's a good, that's a good mask section. And then I'm going to hit Control, and then I'm going to tap the the mesh itself, and that's going to mask out a blurred version of that patch, and that's going to give us a little bit more of a softer transition to where the hair, <coughs> sorry, the hair will grow from. So in other words, we have the mask. I'm going to jump straight to our fiber mesh section. And then within the fiber mesh, we have um, this preview button over here. And as soon as I hit preview, you will see the hair essentially grow from that patch and or that masked area. And the nice thing is because we added some sort of a blur towards the edges, the hairs will be shorter and less of a harsh transition between those areas. So that's a quite a nice way of approaching it. And you can end up, you know, choosing to soften this mask even further. And the more you do that, the more the hair kind of, you know, becomes more sparse around the areas where the, the mask is less opaque, if, if I want to call it that. So I'm going to just undo that and hit preview again, just to keep that nice and sharp. And then areas down here, that's a little bit too too rough. Let's turn the preview off. And what I'm going to do is um, let's uh, make the mask a little bit softer over here. I'm going to choose my intensity much, much lower. And then I'm going to hold down Control and Alt this time. And then just reduce the area of where the mask is going to be applied so something like that control and alt will essentially be the inverse of your regular masking I'm gonna hit preview and that's much better in terms of density right obviously the length is something that we can still address it's way way too intense the other thing that I'm kind of finding annoying is that the default layout with with ZBrush is that the background has this gradient and especially with the hair being so dark um, yes, I can change the color, but for the sake of the background, I'm going to change the document itself so it's not nearly as dark. So I'm just changing the range all the way to zero, and that will make the transition not having this gradient color. And then we have this document background. So if you click over here and then drag towards any area in your document UI, it's essentially sampling that color. So we can choose a color that will kind of help us, you know, just a little bit. Obviously, you can choose one of these quite overly saturated colors as well. I'm going to use a medium light gray, something along those lines. Uh, that's good enough. Right, so now we can see much, much clearer to where the hair will grow from.
So I'm going to cover a few of the modifiers in the fiber mesh options. So in the modifiers, if we open this up, we have options to increase and decrease the fiber density. So just by dropping this, we're essentially making it less and more. So I'm going to get this quite, quite nice. Something like that would be a good coverage. And then I'm going to reduce the length, overall length of these. Let's bring them down to about maybe a hundred. Let's see what that looks like. That's already much, much better. Um, areas that's been um, masked, just a portion, just very subtle, will become even shorter. So you just have to take that in consideration. And uh, so we will might have to address those a little bit later, you know, increasing the length if we feel the need to do so. Uh, we have some length variation. And that would be quite nice to have some more variation in some areas. Let's keep it down to about, let's say, 0 0.3, 0 0.03. So they're more or less the same trim length. I want more of a proper clean groom instead of a, you know, bushy kind of beard, very rugged kind of look. Uh, so I want to reduce that length uh, variation just a tiny bit. Then we have some density variation. Overall, I want the density not to vary at all. I'll control that manually where I want to trim them down or not. And additionally, we have then this attribute over here that's called the coverage. Now, the coverage in general is essentially the width and thickness of each of these hairs. If we have a look at these hairs, they're essentially polygon planes. That's what they are at the moment. But because they have uh, having their coverage so thin, they actually appear to be more like singular hairs. So you could use them, you know, straight out of ZBrush as actual you know, fibers or physical geometry, and they look pretty, pretty decent. But for my actual output or the end result is I'm going to send these fibers back to Maya and then link them up to use some sort of a hair system. I might have, I'll show you guys a few different approaches how we can utilize these. Um, we can end up exporting these polygon planes into Maya curves and then attach them to your typical in hair system, which is fabulous. I mean, that's something that could really, really um, help with the density and the coverage. And we have some ad other attributes like, um, you know, coal and uh, those kind of attributes. So we'll have a look at that when we get to that point. Right. So further, we have options for twist and we have options for clumping, and, you know, all these kind of things. But before we address any of the other attributes, if we have a look at this polygon plane, you'll notice that, or these, rather, these fibers, they're essentially divided into three sections, uh, or rather segments. So what I like to do is, for the sake of the, the actual beard, let's increase this segment slider that's at the moment three to something like six or eight. And that will give us eight segments to control much f um, more in depth in terms of, you know, stylizing these hairs and so on. So now that we have more points, I want to go back to the coverage and quickly talk about what this guy does. So when I grab the slider and I increase this, I'm essentially changing the width of these polygon planes. If I were to use these as sort of polygon planes with transparency maps or textures, then this would be quite a useful slider because then we can increase the width of these fibers to give us the width of, you know, a typical polygon plane. And by doing so, unfortunately, the value only goes up to 5,000 as a maximum value. Um, I'm not sure how to address these to override this value, even if you try to type in a higher number like 10,000 it still kind of zeroes out or rounds out the values to 5,000. So there might be a way somehow to, to maybe change our settings of the scale of the model to kind of compensate for the actual density or the coverage width um, to kind of change these up to be even, you know, thicker if you wanted to. Um, I'll look into that and see if we have maybe an override for that kind of slider. But at the moment, We'll just work with what we have. So first of all, the twist is kind of destroying the look overall. So I'm going to reduce the twist completely. 
I'm going to go to the twist value and just you know type in zero, and that's going to straighten out these fibers. And then we can see we're getting some pretty nice coverage overall, but they're just um, you know very flat at the moment. They're not standing out properly as as I would expect them to in a typical beard kind of scenario. Beard does not drape down like typ typical hair. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's collapse this window down here. That's the twist uh, or the gravity profile. And we can reduce the gravity a bit. Let's do something like 0.1. And you can already see that standing out a little bit better. And maybe now we can address some of the length slider attributes as well. Let's try something like point, uh, like 150 maybe. Yeah, that's a good value. Right. I think now we're getting some, some good coverage. Um, at the moment, I do feel like the fibers might be a bit too much now that we have increased the coverage to such a, a wide or large width. Um, so what I'm going to do is bring this amount down a bit more. Something like that. Right, that's a good value. And we have options to change by masking. If you put it that to zero, it disregards the masking softness completely. So I just want a tiny bit of that. Something like something like that should be a good number. And then we have by area. So that's the area of the faces. So it kind of uses that as a slider overall to soften them and or blurring them, thus making each each face, regardless of their size, uh, more working as as growing the hairs uniformly instead of you know in individual hairs. So if you make that completely zeroed out, then no matter what, these are all exactly the same width, same density. Um, I do see that some of them are slightly um, smaller, and I think that's the coverage um, variation. So I'm going to zero that out as well. Let's see. I'm going to zero that out completely. And I'm um, still having too many fibers. I'm going to drop this down even further. Something like that. And let's see, maybe a tiny bit of by, ar by area. Yeah, that's, that's looking good. Right. So length might be still too high. Let's drop that as well. A little bit more. Right, I think that's a good number. Right, so what I'm going to do now is, um, for the sake of just preview, I'm going to bump the, the colors up, just random colors. It doesn't really matter what the, the colors are at this point, because they will eventually be exported with an actual fiber mesh texture that we can use later on inside of Maya with our own UV maps and so on and so forth. So the general things that I have now is more or less good enough for us to start getting into actually grooming this and you know combing some of these hairs around. Um, so I still feel like I need to change a few of these attributes so I will be back within a few few seconds. Right, so I'm back. So I went in and changed some of these attributes, I think was the coverage for the most part. And that got these guys to be a little bit wider than the the width that I um, initially had. And that's giving me exactly the, the look that I wanted to as initial starting point. So from here, what I want to do is I want to start manipulating these using groom brushes. And the way we do that initially is going to be, you know, clicking accept and then that's going to generate a new patch of, of um, or rather subtool that we can work with. But before we get into that, I want to quickly address something regardless, uh, regarding to this uh, fiber mesh texture panel. And if you don't load any texture into these fiber meshes, then they will not generate UV maps uh, coordinates for you to actually go and you know apply some textures to. So it doesn't really matter what kind of texture you're using at, uh, in the beginning. It's just a way to quickly generate some sort of an interesting you know variation and breakup. But um, before we do that, I want to address something regarding textures and how to bake out your own kind of transparent map 
transparency maps from other fiber meshes so we can use them as a texture source for the existing fiber mesh that we have. So before we do uh, that, I'm going to jump to another primitive and it doesn't really matter what kind of primitive we use. So in fact, what I'm going to do is keep it simple, use a polygon plane just a simple polygon plane and what I'm going to do is just um, squash this guy so I'm going to make it make it a polymesh 3d first and that's going to make it available for us to actually edit and I'm going to hit F to frame on that rotate my camera using the right mouse button outside here and um, so that's giving us the, the, the texture or rather the polygon plane that we can go and manipulate so I'm going to jump to my transpose move tool and I'm going to drag it out more or less from the center and they're just kind of squashing the the initial size of this guy using this red circle here at the top so if you click and drag you can see I'm going at a skew angle so if I hold down shift we're essentially locking it to go only in a certain direction and that keeps it nicely constrained so once I've adjusted the position of this polygon plane I'm then going to go and I uh, just change some of the let's see if we have the option to go and change the the initial no I'm not going to do that that's for now for now it's fine I don't want to complicate anything at this point so I'm going to mask out the the area that I want to grow the hairs from and what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate new fibers from this surface now the cool thing is ZBrush has um, an interesting feature that I realized only like a few weeks ago that it automatically knows in which direction your, your your document is facing so thus it knows that pointing down this way is the gravity going you know downwards so if I were to rotate my my polygon plane to face downwards and then we generate a fiber mesh this will generate fibers going down from this polygon plane so what I mean by that is this gravity attribute inside of the fiber mesh will then grow the hairs according to that. If I toggle this off and rotate this forward and then say preview, then the hairs will grow along the plane this way, scooping downwards. So initially, I would rather have them face straight down by using this feature, toggle preview off and then toggle it back on and these are going perfectly straight that's exactly what I want so going from there we can then choose the length of the fibers the, the no, you know your initial count of the fibers and all those kind of things so let's reduce that more or less so what I want I'm going to increase the length a lot more and we're going to increase the amount of segments quite high I really really want to go in and stylize some of these hairs a little bit more so let's do coverage of let's try something like 20 that's a bit too much try 10 more or less yep that's a good number right so from here what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna choose a base color that's more like a brownish beard color something like that and then the tip, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter as well. So something like that. Right. So now that I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and increase the coverage a tiny bit more. So we have a little bit thicker hairs. And then I'm going to hit accept. And that's going to now generate new hairs from that that we can go and comb. So this is giving me an option. Would you like to put this into fast preview mode? Yes or no? And if you say no, it just keeps it as is. If you say yes, it, it makes it look a little bit more, um, you know, not as dense and it not, not as realistic. Not that I would say this looks realistic at all. But nonetheless, we have the fibers. So if I go to my subtool panel, panel over here, we can see that we have the new fibers over there. So I have that selected. And then we can go into polyframe and we can see all these are you know polygon hairs growing off of that and what I'm going to do from here I'm um, going to use some of my grooming brushes to stylize the hair so let's have a look um, I'm going to use the you know if you hit G 
and you'll see there's all your different brushes. We have groom, hair ball, hair long, hair short, lengthen, so on and so forth. So the first one that I want to give a go at is going to be just the you know, typical groom brush. So using a regular groom brush, I'm going to zoom out a bit. And if I move this around, you can see it kind of really messes up the hair quite a bit and it moves each hair according to which point I have selected and they're pushing in all direction and so on and so forth. So for me, you have to go and adjust the brush settings to really make them work for you. So what I mean by that is your brushes over here, the one that you have selected has its own set of fiber mesh attributes. So if you go to fiber mesh attributes over here, we have things like the preserved length. Yes, that's at the moment a set to 100, meaning it's going to preserve the length and just kind of adjust the points accordingly. Then we have options for uh, the forward propagation, we have inverse propagation, and then we have for the, the one that I usually want to address is the front collision tolerance. So the front collision tolerance is like an attribute that allows you to only up to a certain distance from the initial growth point will affect those points accordingly. So let me go back. So if we, let's say, increase this to a higher number, it's essentially only allowing us, in fact, let me make the brush quite big. And if I move these, you can see that right about there, it does not want to bend nearly as easy as the initial starting point. So it just gives us a little bit more control over the brush. And if you want to have it bend closer to the head, you have to set that, or rather the, the growing point, you have to set that value much, much lower. Something like 19 or 10 or 6 or something like that to really get in there and be able to bend them accordingly. You can see how you can make this nice and flat quite easily. Right, so for me, this brush um, is okay. Uh, I can still go and play around with some of these attributes. Um, first, I want to use a different brush. I want to talk about the groom lengthen, or rather the groom long, long hair. And there we go. And this one gives me a little more smoother, flowy kind of motion. Uh, it gives me more control over bending these fibers. And we can really go in and separate these hairs quite easily. and give them different flowing breakups. So some of them kind of clustering together, some of them splitting up and flowing into different directions. And just be careful not to tweak these points more on an individual basis, otherwise they will not look so nice. I'll give this a bit of a smooth motion, break this out, something like that. And we can play with different shapes. So it's this could take a bit of time, you know, just getting used to some of these different brushes. Uh, we have some of the brushes called Groom Clump. That's quite nice if you want to clump some of these hairs together. And that's all dependent on your brush intensity and obviously your, you know, where you're clicking on. Uh, obviously also your brush size. So if you make the brush smaller, we can have these kind of clump more smaller increments instead of larger chunks. So that's quite nice. I really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and play with these and come up with different solutions until I find something that kind of works for me. And then I'm going to show you guys how we can take this patch and transform that into a usable texture with transparencies and then plug it into the actual fiber mesh for the polygon beard that we're currently building at the moment. Right, so there's two different parts. There's the part that where I generate the actual you know, beard shape, and then there's a part where I generate the textures that I will initially sign into the beard. So going from there, um, I'm going to give you guys um, some time to get into that, and then I'll be back just now. Right, so I played around with some of this um, set of hair fibers, and um, I have 
found this uh, brush turbulence that really helps a lot with breaking up these fibers into you know, clusters of separate strands flowing away from the actual surface and that gives us so much more interesting looking you know hairs especially for the fact that beard is not by default a very straight kind of fiber in the first place and so by making these hairs kind of breaking up and giving them some waviness especially at the edges and the ends it really gives us a nice looking result in terms of um, you know giving the the hairs a realistic kind of feeling so once I have this patch kind of blocked out uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use uh, we can use some of the transpose tools and if we use the transpose tool something like the move brush the transpose tool is smart enough to not affect the roots of the actual hair so we can kind of pull them together or further apart depending on what you kind of want and um, also if we were to use a scale tool, we're just making them longer and or shorter. So that's another way of approaching it, even after the fact, if you wanted to kind of work with them um, based on the transpose tool. So going back to the actual grooming brushes, we have, you know, we talked about the, the groom length or groom long, we talked about the groom brush and then the groom uh, turbulence. Those are probably my most favorite ones. There is some options to make uh, simple knots. And it's kind of squiggling and whirling these guys out if you wanted to kind of create that motion of hairs twisting along a certain axis. Quite nice, very, very nice. You can also reduce the intensity if you wanted to. And not that I think this is really working for us in terms of a beard kind of look. But nonetheless, that's quite useful. We have hair toss, and that's kind of swooping the hairs around according to certain, you know, and it breaks the hairs up, so it's leaving some of these kind of flowing in the back, staying behind, and so on. Um, we have hair ball, and these will kind of cluster together like a ball, and you can pull these hairs out and then create this little swingy kind of motion. I use that more often for kind of longer hairs on a character's head. We also have options for coloring and, uh, you know, I think we talked about the clumping and then there's a blower and the blower kind of just separates the hairs from that center point from where the brush is intercepting the actual fibers. So, Definitely pay, play with those brushes, give that a go and kind of f see what you come up with. Um, at the end of the day, you have to build your own workflow that kind of works for your style um, and your, your approach to generating fibers. But let's continue with what we have at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just um, take this hair and I'm going to change my document size. Now if I zoom out of my documents, you'll see my document is definitely not square. So changing the document is quite easy. We all have to just to go to documents and uh, you see down here we have a width and height. And at the moment it's set to proportional so it stays within this proportional set of values. So I'm going to uncheck that and just type in 1024 by 1024 and that will essentially set up our resolution for the document that we want to use. And then what we have to do is hit resize and it's going to give you a little message asking you, are you sure you want to do this? Um, it's not undoable. It's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm going to hit yes. I'm fine with that. And at the moment, the document has now dropped the actual hair to the canvas. So what I need to do is I need to clear out my canvas by hitting Control N and then redraw the actual hairs and then go back into edit mode so that we can actually keep working with it as is. And this time, if I zoom out, you can actually see the document is nice and square. And the reason why I'm setting this up for a square setup is because I want to use this document as an actual texture for the hairs. So we can choose to place the hairs close to the top to where the, the actual polygon planes will essentially generate the hairs from.
and that we lay, leave everything else at the bottom, more of a negative space. Yes, and my document is currently still that red tint, so I'm going to take that out completely by making this uh, pure white, or rather pure black. I'm just going to choose my black color. And with that in mind, we can now go back to our uh, documents, or rather, sorry, let's go to the texture palette. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say grab the document and depth. If you do that, what's going to happen is it's going to capture the actual texture color information from the fibers and generate a diffuse map for us. And this diffuse map can then be saved to you know, use as a color map. I'm going to drop that into my sculpt -offs. And this is just my personal project folder for the character that I'm currently working on. And I'm going to set this to be um, fibers color rights. And I'm going to leave this as a PNG texture. There we go. And additionally, we have the option to go to the alphas and do pretty much exactly the same thing. If I so grab doc, it will actually copy the transparency information from the document and that allows us to use that as a texture. So I'm going to use this as a TIFF file and this is going to be fiber alpha and we can use that for further use later. Right, so now that we have that we could also additionally switch the material type um, to something like this normal RGB mat and this will essentially capture the RGB information for us to create height information to, to use in um, a document. So pretty much the same process, all we have to go and do is go back to textures and then hit grab doc and that's going to capture the transparency information in fact, let me try one more thing. I'm not too sure if it's going to be too happy with the base color of the background uh, being black, especially because it's a normal map. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sample the, the you know default color for a normal map. If I remember correctly, the color for that is um, quite a specific set of values. So let's see color. Let's uh, open that up. We could set that. I think that's well. And I'll have to try and find those values for you guys. I'll be back just now. Right. So the values that I was referring to previously is going to be 160 for the red channel, 160 for the green channel, and then 255 for the blue channel. These values are what's considered as the flat normal without any details. So with that value picked, I can then go and sample that in my document quite easily just by going back to the color background. And if I click on that, it's going to automatically sample the first color from our um, you know, front color. And that's now giving us a proper clean normal map that we can use for, um, for the normals. Um, so I'm just waiting for this to save. There we go. And then we can go back again and say grab document. And that's giving us a perfect normal map for what we want to do. So what I'm going to do now from here is just go again export. And then we're going to set that as fiber fibers normal. Set that up. There we go. Great, and now we can use these textures for future reference um, to generate some pretty cool looking details. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my other document. I don't need any of these textures anymore, so I can reset my document and my colors back to the initial setup. And I'm going to choose, this is a flat white color in the background. There we go. And choose my subtool. Right, I'm going to hit F to frame that. My character is still using this foreground color, so I'm going to choose a white color and just fill my character with the default white, say fill object. And that will make sure that I am not messing up with my colors as I'm going along. So 
my mask is still applied to the actual mesh so we could still go in and uh, switch to the actual fibers under the fiber mesh properties and then just toggle that back on to see what we were uh, working with previously so at the moment what I have here is we have a base tip uh, base color which is red and the tip color that's more of that kind of pinkish tint and if I were to use these colors without a texture it will just kind of use that as an overall color from base to tip so we can use a resolution setup to choose the resolution for the textures we can go up to 255 or 256 for resolution I'm not sure if I can override this let's try that nope so the fibers are not intended to be used as a full-on um, uh, 1k texture resolution which is fine that's not a train smash so from here I'm just going to switch that to the texture that we have made previously and this is going to be this fiber color so I'm going to choose that and it's going to ask you listen this texture size is definitely larger than what it's um, defaultly set to do you want to reduce the size uh, will improve the memory usage yes or no so let's say yes uh, for now and what that will do is now go and automatically apply that texture to every fiber and that's pretty awesome we can really um, get some good looking hairs from that and since I have placed the hairs at where the top part is closest to the, the document and the bottom part not it automatically assigns the hairs according to that angle so what I'm going to do now is we have a transparency slider which we can bump up and that allows us to trim away through those hairs if you want to see those hairs more on an individual basis so that's pretty cool I uh, just want to check something high resolution edge tiling can increase and decrease the tiling if you wanted to we can also set the oh I see the fibers are not attached the right way around I'm sure there's an option for us to flip this around um, I'm going to try and find the property for that and then I'll get back to you guys shortly okay so I found out what the problem was and it seemed like um, the default way that ZBrush's um, texture creation works is that for some reason it automatically flips the, the vertical axes of, of your textures so when they're being extracted they um, they just don't get assigned the proper way on the model so you always have to go to your actual texture itself just click this flip V button and that will flip the texture around so it's facing the right way around and then when we go back to our fibers we just choose the texture we want to assign and then that will automatically redistribute the texture according to its proper direction so that's more or less the approach for for these hairs and um, so we can definitely you know bring up or down the transparency if you want a more like a proper hair breakup and so on for now I'm just going to keep it solid and um, let's have a look just want to check to colorize don't think I need these no color variation none of these things are required at this point right so now that we have the texture assigned we can then go in and hit accept and this will allow us to now go and work with these fibers on an individual basis using the typical grooming brushes so I'm going to go back to my sub tools and you can see now the the, the actual beard or the fibers are on a separate um, sub tool I'm going to pick that and then the first thing that I'm going to do is toggle on my symmetry just for the initial setup so we can kind of half the work load as we are doing at the moment I switch my textures and my alphas back to zero or nothing just by picking this alpha off and texture off and then I can go back into my grooming brushes and start you know grooming them as we feel like we need to and start combing these guys to point in the right direction as we want I'm going to spend a bit of time using the same kind of approach as we have already talked about initially um, so I'll be back in a few 
So while I was busy, I wanted to kind of uh, see how I can shorten these hairs. And um, so I found that if you're holding down shift, you can actually reduce the length of these hairs or these fibers quite easily. So just um, keep that in mind whenever you're doing this, this hairstyle. Uh, the other thing is I switched to the brush lengthen and that gives me control to lengthen out some of these fibers uh, because they, they seemed a little bit too short. So by lengthening these guys we're getting a little bit more control over certain parts. That kind of gives us a nice you know, break up. So over here same kind of thing. Can make some of these hairs a little bit longer. And then I'm going to use some of the other brushes to comb and break it up. Be back just now. Right, so I'm back. I've been working on the, the fibers a bit. And I actually went backwards and forwards between the fiber mesh generation and the actual grooming. Because I, I felt like some of these fibers were too wide and they just didn't do the, the beard any justice. So... Yeah, sometimes you have to go backwards and forwards between the, the, the actual fiber mesh modifiers and just play with the, the coverage and some of the coverage um, variation just to kind of break these up and give them some, you know, a more more um, variation between the actual width of the hair and the length of the hair and then also the, obviously the density of the hair as well. I ended up using some of the groom length and brush to kind of comb these guys um, and get them to be a little bit longer than the rest of the beard because it felt like this character definitely needed more of a longer uh, mustache than any other parts. The other thing that I wanted to kind of just mention is the fact that um, these brush money fibers in, uh, fires in the, the uh, fiber mesh panel, they're a bit confusing initially when you start working with them. And the thing is with the, the uh, collision uh, tolerance attributes over here. This one is essentially sampling, not just the fact that you're clicking on it and you're telling it uh, it should only sample up to a certain length and then not really affect the hairs. Um, that goes right um, together with the or hand in hand with the, the Z intensity. So I dropped the Z intensity quite a lot to give me more control over the, the combing of the hairs and um, doing so that gave me more control over when the hairs actually rotate. So when you look at this, um, when you actually click on a hair, a ZBrush will combine the front tolerance together with the variation tolerance. So when I click on something, it will actually give it variation so that some of them will rotate in slightly different right directions and others not. Um, and then, so that's why I kind of turned that off completely to zero. And um, I added more stiffness so it takes a little bit longer for the actual hairs to start to kind of follow the actual stroke direction as you comb. So they are really trying to take their, their, their time to get to, to the actual direction of the stroke. The other thing is the front uh, propagation as well as the inverse propagation. These two attributes are kind of like um, when you click initially on one of these hairs, you're essentially starting off uh, sampling the... Uh, uh, as they say in the little tooltip window, that it affects the root and then propagates the curvature direction from your stroke based um, towards the tip of the hair or the fiber mesh. And then this one is the inverse. So if you want to affect the tip and then slowly progress your the, the effect towards the root of the hair, you can use these two in conjunction. So that's quite nice. And my, my end result is this as we have right now. Uh, you will also notice that the actual fibers at the moment do not have that uh, texture that I used previously because it was a bit difficult for me to actually see the size of the fibers um, with the, those textures. So I ended up not having the textures applied when, when I initially created the hairs. But with that in mind, uh, I ended up with, with essentially fibers that do not have any UV coordinates. So it's not necessarily a big problem. It means that just after the fact, I have to go and generate them. So I'm gonna quickly show you guys how you can do that. So if you go to the your actual poly or UVs 
map over here, you will see that there is a create option. When I open that up, you'll see there is uh, different types of modifiers over here. And one of them in particular is the UV for fiber mesh. So when you click on that, it actually gen generates the UV coordinates for you specifically for these fibers so that you can actually go and apply some sort of a texture. So what I can do now is jump to my texture palette and then just use one of those textures that I want to assign and you'll now see that it applies the, the texture like um, as if I were to associate them from the beginning or the start of my initial creation. Right, so with that in mind, we now have the actual geometry that we can export to Maya and then assign these same hairs to to that on the character. So the first step is going to be essentially making sure we export the, the character. So what I'm going to do is go to my character and just for the sake of um, uh, for export, um, I'm going to duplicate this character because I want to keep the initial mask if I wanted to go back and you know repaint some stuff I can do that and on this duplicate I'm just going to clear the mask and then go straight ahead to go Z which will then export my my mesh into the the Maya 2016 right so there's my character my base resolution and um, I could choose to either export my lower subdivision or my secondary uh, the second subdivision from the lowest and that's quite easily just a matter of if you know when you click go Z it goes straight to Maya with the lowest subdivision I could go to this fiber or back to ZBrush and just go geometry and then I'm gonna go to this resolution over here let's hide my initial character and then I'm going to delete the lowest subdivision that one and that will get rid of my lowest subdivision and I'm not too concerned because I still have my original with a mask if I wanted to go back but just for the sake of export I'm now going to hit go Z again and that will now bring in my new mesh and it will since the names are exactly the same it will just override the existing mesh that I already had inside of Maya Right, with that set up now, what I'm going to do is go to my fibers and pretty much repeat the same process. These do not have any subdivisions, so they can easily go just straight to ZBrush without any issues. And we can now see that they are applied and they have all equal numbers of subdivisions. Looking pretty good. And then also if we jump to the modeling tab and go to the UV editor, we can see that the textures have come across as well as each of these fibers have exactly the same UV coordinate space applied perfectly and uniformly across the UV grid. So that's exactly what I wanted to see. So let's have a look. If I press six, we should be able to uh, actually see the fibers and uh, we can see there they are the only thing is they don't have proper transparencies and the reason for that is if I jump to my hypershade by clicking this button over here at the top I will see that we have our fiber mesh shader I'm going to drag this in middle mouse drag and drop it into the node editor and I'm going to dock my perspective window in here as well so my viewport, put that over there and press six to preview and place more or less like that. And I'm going to hit graph network on this guy, input outputs, and that should show us the actual texture TIFF file from, from ZBrush connected to the corresponding color channel. And we also should have a transparency or alpha channel that we can drag and drop into the transparency slot. So let's have a look. Uh, the transparency has three different channels. It's got red, green and blue and alpha out or out alpha does not have that. So thus that's why it's giving me an issue when I try to connect that straight into that node. So when you expand it, you can see there's three different channels and you can force connect all three manually into here. And if this TIFF file comes with an alpha map, 
then we have to just quickly check here in the actual texture, selecting the texture, going to the color balance, and there should be an alpha is luminance option. So when you check that, let's have a look, let's zoom in a little bit closer. When you check that, it's now registering the transparency, but for some reason it's still not reading it like I would expect it to, even though we are using viewport 2 as the renderer for our current display. Just want to check the, the actual transparency algorithm at the moment. We can see that we have simple, we have object sorting, we have weighted average, and we have depth peeling. So these all have different ways how they sample the actual depth information for the transparency. And it seemed like this TIFF file reads better when we turn off the alphas luminance. And um, we can cycle through these again, simple. We can cycle to, sorry, let me put that back, object sort, and keeps jumping away. That's quite strange. Weighted average. So these are just different ways how the transparency will be sampled. At the moment, I feel like the TIFF file is not giving me exactly what I want. So I'm going to break the connections and go back to ZBrush, or we can just bring in the initial alpha map that I have painted or generated out of the, the document grab previously. So we can do that by just uh, clicking anywhere in your node editor, hitting tab, and then we can type in file, which will cycle to the nodes related to the closest word called file. And then the one that we want to sample is gonna be with a file and it's a texture type. It's not a projection or a stencil. So I'm gonna hit enter and that should generate for some reason it did not. Let me try again. File and choose it, press enter, and there we have it. So I'm going to bring this into view and I'm going to double click on this guy. And in the properties editor, we need to quickly pipe in the name of the texture that we want to sample. So this is going to be on my local um, external drive going to open that up. We're going to go to my personal projects. I'm going to go to my uh, sculptors folder, which is this one over here. And there it is. There's my fiber mesh alpha. I'm going to sample that, bring that in. And then this time I'm going to take the color out and then connect that to the transparency over here. And now we can see it's reading the transparencies properly like like I was expecting it to. At the moment it's still not looking as neat as I, as I would like it to. Let's quickly look at it in a full view. So I'm going to go back to my regular Maya uh, window. I'm going to expand that and we can see that it's reading the textures but it's kind of overriding the color for some reason. Also we can still see bits of the actual flat texture which, which is definitely not what we're looking for, especially if we were to render this with um, you know, Maya software. I'm going to bring this into view and you can see that sampling up, uh, upside down. Now I think the reason for that is that when we brought the textures over from, from ZBrush, those textures are still upside down when they're being sampled. You can see that over here it's more solid and over here it's more transparent and we actually want it the opposite way around. So we need to go back to ZBrush and then make sure the textures are all flipped the right direction and then bring them all back into Maya and then set them up again. So let's quickly do that. I'm going to go back to my ZBrush file and I hope it did not crash on me. Let's have a look. Okay, so I'm back. ZBrush did end up crashing on me for some reason, but um, it doesn't matter. I mean, stuff like this typically happens all the time. So we just need to reopen the file and then continue. So currently, like I was saying, we still need to address the, the actual textures. So with those textures that we generated previously, let's have a look and ZBrush did not keep them. Let's have a look. I probably need to 
yeah, I'll have to regenerate these guys using this this texture palette. And I'm going to re-put that back down there, over there, like that. And uh, we're going to go grab doc again. Grab documents. And we can choose a flat color as well, and that's going to give us a flat, flat color from our diffuse map. So instead of having that material shade on top of it, that's also something that we can can use in this texture making process. I'm going to go to my fiber mesh palette and then you know, see if I can change the colors a little bit more because at the moment they're overall very similar for the most part. So let's have a look. I think I do like the flat color shade some extent but not nearly as much as the the base base color this one gives us a little bit more variation in tone right so from there i'm just going to do again that document grab and same process for the alpha we need to capture the alpha as well grab the documents and that's there we go and we're going to export this guy and we're going to save this as our TIFF file and load my project folder. Let's have a look. There we go. Personal projects. Sculpt tools. It's going to be my transparency alpha. There we go. And I'm going to choose my diffuse, export that as well. And I'm going to save this as, I think previously we saved that as the color. And the normals should also be done. Normal map. And then we need to fill the background with that initial color. So I'm going to go again, color. 160, 160, and 255. Then I'm going to go to my document, just click there, and that's going to resample the foreground. And then we go again, document grab and export. There we go. Right, so now that we have done that, I'm going to go back to the Maya file. And I might have to process it. Uh, the TIFF file always seem to give me some issues. And I like to use the PNG file format. That seems to work a little bit better. So I'm going to open up my Photoshop and just quickly process those textures. We can also hand paint those textures if you wanted to. And I'll show you guys how to do that if you wanted to have more control over the, the look of your hair instead of using fiber mesh. So I'm going to reopen that document. I'm going to quickly jump to my drive again. Personal projects, sculpt tools. I'm gonna grab my color. I'm gonna grab my normal. Actually, just the color and the alpha. So, with the alpha, I'm gonna select everything. Control A, Control C to copy it, and then I'm gonna go to my channels, make a new channel. And then I'm going to paste that information right into there. Then I'm going to save my document again. And this is going to be my PNG. That's a color PNG. I save that out, replace. And I'm going to say no compression of sorts. And now we have a transparency map that we can use. You could also clip out this information if you don't want the, the white background. Um, so. For now, let's see if I select that, if I go to my channels and I control click on this alpha icon, that's going to make my selection. And then we can reverse the selection just by hitting control shift I. That's going to reverse the selection. And in my document, I'm just going to unlock the background, hit delete. And then what we are left with is essentially the transparency for the diffuse channel just the hairs for the actual the fuse. At the moment I don't think I want that so let's leave it like this for now 
and um, let's see what it looks like inside of Maya before we do too many adjustments because this is kind of a backwards or forwards process to see if we can improve the quality and look of the texture um, going you know from the the actual hair and back to Photoshop you might even not end up using any of these fibers that we have right now so let's have a look I'm gonna deselect that I'm gonna open up Maya again I'm gonna select my fibers reopen my hyper shade by clicking that button and um, I'm going to disconnect the textures that I currently have connected here and in fact I'm going to get rid of the TIFF file and I'm going to take my current file just double click on the node or rather right click and say rename so where's the rename There we go. I'm going to type in rename. Sorry, not rename, but <laughs> let's call this uh, let's say fibers. That's good enough. That renames the file node, but it still keeps this one, the old name for some reason. But you can see the name have um, have changed. So I'm going to go back to my path. Just load in that fiber mesh color. PNG file, load that in, and then let's drag and drop the color out or out color to this guy. And we can see the texture is supplied successfully. The only thing is that the texture doesn't have transparency. So since we know this this has transparent output, we could go to our texture and then drag this guy straight onto the transparency node over here and that will automatically take the corresponding outputs and then link them up to the proper area so on the color balance let's see if we get any difference on the alpha is luminance if we toggle that on and by doing so we're getting more transparency you can definitely see that in the little viewfinder, but the texture becomes very, very flat. Uh, it doesn't look correct at all. Uh, this is one thing that I'm, I'm kind of a bit concerned about. I think what I will have to do is I'll probably have to check the the way that these transparencies are being sampled, and we can see that simple is good enough but if we look very close we can see that it actually cuts out the hairs and not the background we actually want the opposite so what's happening is that because the alpha is reading upside down where black is considered as um, you know the transparent part and white is the the opaque part well if we go back to the Photoshop let's have a look we can see that's the opposite. In fact, these are being clipped and this is not. So let's see if, if we were to inverse the alpha, save the image again as the PNG file, this color PNG, and going back to Maya, just refreshing the actual thumbnail by clicking reload and let's see if this is now reading correctly it still reads like it's not supposed to show up with the transparency inversed so this is something i'll have to address and i'll show you guys once i've figured this out Right, so I think I've figured it out. Um, for some reason, the TIFF or the PNG file still doesn't process the, the the transparencies correctly. So what I ended up doing is I made a separate, just black and white PNG file. I saved that out, and I even went as far as actually putting it to grayscale, so it only exports the black and white information, and then saved that as a, a separate alpha channel and then inside of Maya so what I've done is I made a duplicate node 
and I have brought the the actual alpha channel into here and I turned on the alpha as luminance because you you can see if I turn that off it makes it completely opaque and breaks the the transparency effect and if I turn that on it gives us the proper transparency um, like we were expecting it to so now the the fibers are more opaque and then the areas over here that's giving us more of a um, more of the the transparent information through through the the hairs so the diffuse channel if we have a look here has a lot of white information so this is something that I, I would like to address and the thing is the background being white doesn't work so well with this type of texture it's better to actually have a black background so I'm going to go back to ZBrush and quickly process that as well I'm going to go back to my basic material and I'm going to set my uh, my color to black and I'm going to go back, back to my document and just kind of click there it's going to resample the background with a black diffuse color and then under the textures I'm going to hit grab doc again that will now save out a new version of that texture I'm going to override the old fibers color I'm going to replace yes back to to Photoshop reopen that up and let's uh, uncheck that if I open up that fibers you can see that looks a lot better and that's the one I want to give that to try instead of uh, instead of Maya let's grab this old file and switch that around using the new one with a black background and you can see how much that affects the the, the actual texture it definitely diffuses that a lot more so that's already helping us a lot more so the only last thing that I would like to address then is the fact that the actual fibers um, the specular highlight is showing over the whole thing uh, we need to have it only show up in the areas of the actual hairs so how we can do that is if we go back to the the actual material itself in fact let me expand this up completely bring this down give them more room to actually navigate in all three windows we have an eccentricity slider and that's essentially the broad highlight of our fibers so if you look at these guys over here if we increase and decrease that we're just making this highlight more or less a broader or um, more sharper we also have the highlight strength and that's a, a drop off or the roll off rather and then we have a specular color that we can pump up if we wanted to as well so in this case it would actually be better for us to use some sort of a transparency texture to only affect the areas of where the hairs are so let's see if we can actually make use of the same fiber mesh um, alpha channel and plug that one into our eccentricity plugging that in there and that's now giving us the highlights only in the areas where the actual hairs are and then breaking away from the parts that is completely black in the texture that gives us a lot, lot more interesting look uh, the highlights are still quite high so I'm going to bring that down a lot more don't want these to shine all over the place and um, the color itself we can also tweak if you wanted to right so that gives us some sort of a diffuse effect plus a little bit of, of specularity on these hairs and it looks not too bad it's a bit too I would say sparse so the best way to go about this would be to then rather maybe paint up a hand painted texture inside of Photoshop and see if we can get a better looking result also it could be that these fibers are not enough to give us you know proper coverage and you can see there's a lot of opening spaces in between so that's one thing that we can definitely address as well so I will get to that and then I will come back Right, so I'm back. Um, so I ended up going back to ZBrush and creating another set of fiber meshes that is a lot longer and much thicker as well. You can see the density is quite, quite um, hectic. 
but that's kind of the look that I was going for. And then additionally on top of that, I went to Photoshop and I've manually gone in and painted a set of, of um, let's deselect this alpha, switching back to the RGB channel. And what I did is, let me just quickly create a brand new layer so I can show you guys what I've done. Um, I made the background white. And then what I did was I took just a default black and white brush. If I switch to the brush, choose this empty layer. I made my brush preset quite sharp. And I made the, the profile quite small. And I literally went in and I started painting different strokes to kind of create variations in the fibers. And I'm trying to keep them all within the same starting point, more or less. But as I get to the tip, I can kind of veer them off into different directions, kind of comb them so that they start creating some variations. Like that one over there is obviously not right. So I'm gonna try and get these to be a little bit more the same profile. And you, you can keep on doing this. And once you have that color blocked out on the transparent background, what you can do is you can make your selection, go to your channels, and then make a new alpha out of that. And that will literally save out the new alpha. And then on top of that, I would then go and create another new layer. And then I would lock the, I would, essentially just hide the, the actual selection but still have the ability to paint in it. So Photoshop has that option of the show and then turn off selections. And what this does is it actually keeps the selection there and turn off my visibility for that previous layer that I painted black and then I can go in choose a base color something like this uh, RNG brownish tone something like that and then I can literally just fill in that base color. And usually I use a soft brush in this case and a nice big size as well. And just quickly fill in overall. And then I would gradually kind of turn some of these with different colors and different hues as well. And I get some of them a little bit more saturated, some of them less and so on and then I would save this as a PNG file and that's the file I brought back into into um, let's close X normal I don't know why I opened that go back to my my hypershade and then in the hypershade I made a brand new material this one over here gonna open that full view going to hit F to frame on it and you can see this is the texture over here that I've painted in manually and then I connected the out color to the color and then also I connected the transparency to the transparency slot and this is more or less the kind of look that I'm getting so far um, also yeah the other thing is I connected the actual color information to the specular channel so that the beard feels like it's got more saturation in it itself. Um, the reason why is I felt like the overall gamma correction on the viewports with the, this sRGB button was flattening out the texture quite considerably. So having that on, I just took that same texture and I connected that into the, you know, the, the specular and that kind of got this um, much better kind of looking beard effects. It still feels a bit sparse in some areas and you can definitely see the overall square profile. So this is something that you need to go and fix. And the only way you're going to fix that is by having some variation in textures where these guys only have, let's say, single or singular strands instead of a very large and thick kind of coverage. And then those need to have their own UV um, spaces separately. So I'm looking into a workflow where I can actually create some sort of a script or maybe even download a script. I know there was a script on Creative Crash where you can actually you know, break up your UVs into tiles and then choose which texture you want to assign to which UV tile. So that's definitely something that I would like to address at some point. Um, that's more or less it for this workflow for now. Um, the next video, I'm actually going to talk about how to cover 
or how to take some of the, the fibers that we generate using this method out of ZBrush and then bring them into GMH script and then assign proper real hair, you know, Maya hair to that. So there's a few workflows I'll, I'd like to kind of maybe try and then explain what I'm doing throughout those steps. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.